Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> We're getting ready to open up the consulting services. There have been many people in the comments who've been like, hey, how can I talk to you? How can I talk to you? So I'm gonna put a link under this video, how you can set up your consults. And we're going to get into some new training programs. Now, the first thing is the consults are $1,500 for a one hour consult. And let's see. I mean, these folks don't know how to drive. So, <clears throat> The price of the $1,500 per hour consult is going to go to $2,500 bucks per hour the 1st of August. So what you can do is you can go ahead and get your consult and book it now for any point in the future to save some money. The link is below. Now what will we be talking about? <clears throat> We're going to be talking about business boot camps and this is one of the reasons for the last few months I've been really on people talking about the reality of starting a business if you know this a lot I've got a lot of videos on this channel and the money lab talking about the realities of starting a business understand that the fake youtubers are getting you to watch their videos because they make a lot of money from you watching their videos. This information isn't designed to help you. I'm going to make a very bold statement. 90% of the information on YouTube is garbage. 90% of it. If you were to sit down, if you were to actually really look at it from a substantial perspective and break it down or like someone like me who started several businesses um, knows how to make money I do a breakdown a lot of this stuff is garbage one of the biggest sectors of YouTube that is a hundred percent garbage is the side hustle sector the majority of this stuff you know it's like you can do this side hustle and you can make all this money and what they're what they're doing is they're saying, you know, my opinion of a side hustle, like, let me give you an example. If I had, like, kept it to five or six cars for the car rental business, that would have been a side hustle that could have made, let's say, 4000 a month and wouldn't have required a lot of time on my part. Wouldn't have required a lot of time. But once you start getting to 20 plus cars, that becomes a full-time thing. But if I had kept it at just a few cars, it could have been classified as a side hustle. I'm running a full-time rental car agency, which is, uh, it's, it's full-time, it's full-time. So with the side hustle, YouTube, a lot of that stuff is garbage because uh, one person, I'll mention her name, Kat Theo, she has a job. All right. Call me crazy. And she has a pretty successful YouTube channel. I don't know what her CPM is because you're listening to someone who has a job on how to start a side hustle or small business. How much sense does that make? How much sense does that make? You know, you, like me, I've created a business and I can prove it that I actually pay myself $30,000 a month, which means my business is making money. I have not had a job in 20... Last time I had a job, I was 32. I've not had a job in 22 going on 23 years. I've not had a job. So that's one of the things that, you know, while I've been doing the type of content, which isn't going to get a lot of views. 
already know this. It's not going to get a lot of views. And I'm cool with that because I want to reach the right people. Because if you're one of those people who feel that you're going to make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars a month working 10 hours a week, um, please stop watching this channel because you're foolish. You, you, you've got a lottery type mindset that you're going to hit the lottery, you're going to hit it real big, you're going to knock it out the park. You're going to be making all this money. I'll tell you a story. Uh, years ago, before I became educated, I wasn't educated when I got into this. Um, I used to buy these courses out the back of a magazine. There was an Entrepreneur Magazine. There was Success Magazine. And I would buy these courses and I would just be sitting there literally counting my money because this course is going to do this they're going to teach me how to do this they're going to teach me how to do this and um, I bought all those courses and not one of them put any money in my pocket not one because I was like many of you guys I didn't know any better I simply didn't know any better and this is one of the reasons, and you know, when I go after one of your favorite YouTubers, I get a lot of people who don't like that. Uh, there's a guy that's got how to buy a supercar, make it $48,000 a year. That, is, that whole title is a lie. That whole title is a lie. You're not gonna be able to afford a $100,000 car unless you have a six-figure salary. Or you have bought a hundred thousand dollar car a hundred fifty thousand dollar car and it's on your credit report and your salary went down but because you've got that record you can probably still float it making eighty ninety thousand dollars a year and essentially many people understand your your struggle you're struggling you want that good life you want to have what you want to have. You want to buy what you want to buy. You want to be able to do certain things in life. You want to you want to live well. You, you have dreams. You have ambitions. You want to drive a nice car. You want to live in a nice house. You want to have money in the bank. You want that. And this is where these fake ass YouTubers are preying on your emotions because they know that you have that thirst and they know that you're willing to believe anything because um, someone was talking about a lot of these YouTubers and a lot of these um, influencers were talking about AMC stock and they were pushing stock, promoting the stock, even though they didn't have any money invested in the stock. Once again, you, you got to understand, you can make a tremendous amount of money from YouTube making a video that gets views and what's going to get the views preying upon your emotions saying that hey like there's a video a really good really video i'm gonna probably do a reaction to it uh he's talking about the majority of people who want to do fire cannot do fire he broke it down he broke it down and he's like you know he, he actually said one of the problems with the fire community is people are simply saying that it's a matter of mindset and it's not a matter of mindset. It's a matter of money and math because he broke it down that to even achieve small fire, you need to save and invest $30,000 a year. Now, here's, here's, the, here's the math on that. 75% of America makes less than makes thirty thousand dollars a year that's all they make so essentially these people would have to invest their whole income to achieve fire but what are you gonna live on what are you gonna pay your bills on what are you gonna pay your you know it, it doesn't it doesn't work it just simply doesn't work and you know this is why I have been on this tirade for the last few months because I know what it takes to start a business. And let's just go ahead and I'm about to lose some people. You're gonna have to work your ass off. 
you're going to have to work your ass off. And in the beginning, it's going to be crappy. You're not going to have the Lambo. You're not going to have Big Booty Betty. You're, you're, you're just simply not. You're going to work really, really hard for many months without a return. And that's, right now, that's what my video yesterday, which I, I knew wasn't going to get a lot of views, getting your money out the mud. People don't want to hear that. People don't want to, like, man, I, I, I'm not trying to work that hard. What do you mean I got to have delayed gratification? What do you mean, Glennon, I got to work hard, invest money for months, or in some cases, years, before I get a return? No, 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 no. I got to get my return now, man. And essentially... Many people have what I call is a payday mentality. You work for two weeks, at the end of two weeks, you get a paycheck. And that is most of America. And as long as you have that payday mentality, um, it's going to be very, very hard for you to build a business and for you to build wealth. Essentially, uh, there was a show years ago, Clark Howard, and he was talking about it. and he had this guy call in and they were talking about building a business and they both agreed that it's about a three year journey. Year one is kind of rough. Year two, not as rough. And year three is when you can start sliding money in your pocket. And uh, Clark agreed with him. I agree with him. And the thing is, here's, here, here's the reality. Here is the, um, the numbers. All right. If you invest, let's say, 10 years, and the first two years are crappy, and then year three, it gets easier, the money starts coming in. Let's say you start a business, and the first year, you really don't make, you make money, let's, let's be clear. Your business makes money, but the money goes back into the business. I was having this conversation just yesterday with a guy who has a trucking company. He said the trucking company did 400,000 and he was like, we're going to try to go to the bank and get a loan for 1.2. And I said, of that 400,000, how much was net profit? The bank isn't going to loan you money on that 400,000 gross revenue. They will loan you money on the net profit. And he was like, oh, a lot of people don't understand this because they, they like the business made all this. But see, the bank is looking at like when I go for my business credit, I'm here to tell you that my W-2 and my pay stubs are going to be a big, big part of that. Because the bank wants to see net profit, net revenue. And it's going to be a big, big part of what I'm trying to get accomplished. So, one of the things you, you got to understand. So, um, we're going to get into some business coaching. And I'm going to work on that today. Probably do another video today. And there will be levels to the business coaching. Because uh, there are some people who want to pay me like $500. And then hop on the phone two or three times a week. That ain't going to work. Uh, essentially, uh, I'm going to probably put together some type of business coaching program of per month, and I'm going to do certain levels. I will lay that out, because right now I'm driving, and I, I haven't mapped that out, but there will be business coaching, and this will be for people who already have established businesses. If you're in that beginning stage, and you don't have a lot of money, this program is not for you. It's just not for you. And essentially, um, you know, for the longest time, I gave away a lot of free courses that would uh, make you money and people simply did not um, avail themselves. 96% of the people who signed up for those free courses didn't even open up one. So I got away from the free courses because I've learned that people, unless they are, they have some skin in the game, they pay some money, they ain't gonna do nothing. So there will be a business coaching program and we're also going to get into 
a credit program. Uh, once again, I got to shape all that up, but essentially, I'm going to teach you, you know, we're, we're going to do credit repair and we're going to teach you how to position your credit report for greater credit in the future. Because like, I'm going to talk about it. My Jewelers Club, um, so there's like my Jewelers Club, there's like three or four of them where essentially you're just buying the trade line. Uh, that's garbage. That is garbage. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to do that. I'm going to teach you how to build a real credit profile that can virtually get you anything up to your income because that's a big part of it. Going back to buying a supercar making $48,000 a year. All right, your income, even if you have a perfect credit score and rocking an 850, you go into a Ferrari dealership and it's like, hey man, I got this 850 credit score, but only make $48,000 a year. Uh, what can you give me? They're gonna say absolutely nothing. They're gonna say, we can't give you nothing. There's nothing here that you can afford because yes, your credit is good, that's great, but um, you don't have enough income, homie, and they're gonna shut you down. They're gonna shut you down, and you're not going to be able to get anything, nothing. All right, so we will be talking about <clears throat> how to design your credit profile for maximum effect. Like I said, my jeweler club and all that other stuff, that's tertiary stuff. And it's not really setting up your credit profile the way it needs to be set up because <clears throat> I want you to think about it. If you have bad credit, and you gotta go to my jewelers club, you've gotta do um, secure credit cards. A lot of these credit products charge you money just to have them. And they will hit you like a little bitty fee, like eight bucks, seven bucks, 10 bucks, and give you like a, a really small crappy credit limit. But you know, seven bucks doesn't sound like a lot, right? But seven bucks multiplied times a million credit cards is seven million dollars per month. So you gotta understand the game. So we're gonna be get into um, how to set up your credit, uh, a lot of coaching and stuff, and the corporate papers. All right, let's talk about the corporate papers. Since I have started this business. Because, you know, essentially, I've been starting internet businesses. And internet businesses are a different animal than a business dealing with the public, clearly. So, I'm going to reformat the whole program. I'm going to reformat the holding company strategy. I'm going to add business credit. I'm going to add a lot of things that I'm currently doing. Like with uh, Mac Daddy Autos, I went ahead, I established my LLC, I established my business checking, and one of the first things I did was I got myself a business credit card. You wanna know why? <clears throat> because I've been a pretty much cash and carry person for the longest. I really don't use my credit. I don't. And if I had started with my business credit as soon as I started my business, I'd be sitting on four or five million dollars worth of business credit. So that was a mistake because you want to do things for your business to give you the options to do things in the future. And if I had been thinking, because you're like, you know, I didn't know I was going to start Mac Daddy Autos. I didn't know, you know, right now, business credit would be extremely helpful with Mac Daddy Autos. Extremely helpful versus pushing on my personal credit. I've got 24 cars. 
and only one is financed and I'm running an experiment with that because essentially I didn't want to go ahead and go out and get all of these credit uh, car loans and someone said um, go ahead and lease cars I'm gonna tell you why leasing cars to rent out can be a very dangerous strategy first of all I've got several cars that were in mint condition before I started renting them out. And I've only been renting out cars 11 weeks. 11 weeks, right? And I have numerous damage. And when you lease a car, not only do they penalize you for excess miles, they penalize you for bringing the car back in crappy condition. So all those little dings and little scrapes and curb rash and stuff, they're gonna charge you for it. And that's why leasing cars to put on a rental car platform is a bad, bad idea. Because even my so-called better renters have done damage to the cars. They've not done major uh, damage. They haven't done anything I had to claim. Like, give you an example. I had someone who rented a Toyota Camry for, he paid like $2,000 and the guy before him did like $2,000 and the second renter, um, he did $600 worth of damage. Uh, one of the things he did not do is alert me that the tires were running on the belt and also the car, he hit something. He hit something really, really hard. So that was $600. So I'm $3,400 to the good. Actually, someone's renting that Camry right now. So that car is a money maker, but even when they don't destroy the car, releasing cars to put on the rental platform, something that you got to turn back into someone within two to three years is not, I wouldn't do it. I simply would not do it, knowing what I know after only 11 weeks in the car rental business. So that's me. Also, we're gonna get into some real business coaching for the folks who really, really wanna start a business and looking for guidance. Not for the folks who are watching all these fake ass YouTubers and like, all right, let, let's, let's have this conversation. If you feel that you can start a business with no money, no experience, and not a great amount of time invested, stop watching my channel. Stop watching my channel. That is just complete BS, it's complete garbage, and this is one of the things. Like, let's talk about my YouTube business. Uh, my YouTube business, I did not start with a lot of money. My YouTube business, I started it, I started my YouTube business with $285 and I did not reinvest for about three years but I spent let's see working 10 12 hours a day let's see 10 hours a day 50 200 hours thousands and thousands of hours on my YouTube business I did not spend money, but I spent a lot of time. A lot of time. Literally thousands and thousands of hours of my time on the YouTube business. Thousands. So anyone that's telling you that you can go ahead and secure the bag and work less than you're working on your J-O-B is consciously lying to you. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that. This business right now, it started off pretty rough. Um, it took up a lot of my time because I was on this learning curve that was like this. I had so many things I had to learn, right? So, now that I've kind of learned some of those things, it's become way more manageable. And in time, when I create my SOPs, when I create my training manuals, when I set up my policies and systems, um, I won't be renting the cars. My employees will be renting the cars to people and probably gonna hire the first 
rental car person in December. And it's going to be required they work every other weekend. And if they don't want to work weekends or they're unreliable, they won't they they won't be hired. A lot of people don't want to work weekends. A lot of people don't want to do anything. So they will be getting what's called what's going to call because essentially I'm going to have um, what's called a bat phone because a lot of this apps work through the phones and you, you, this is where you store a lot of your pictures where you need to store a bunch of your pictures. Um, so I, I got to set up my training policy. And once again, we're not going to be there in December. December, August, September, October, November. De December is five months away. And right now, you got people out here telling you you don't have to do what I'm doing to get this kind of money. So far, um, my car rental business has made $30,000 in 11 weeks. And we're getting to the point because essentially... Once again, uh, I saw a comment. It's like, I know you don't want to hear from other car. I, it isn't that I don't want to hear from someone who is experienced. I want to hear from someone who's building what I want to build. If you've been on Toro three, four, five years, you don't have your own commercial insurance, and you're still on that 70% 70 70 plan, and you haven't figured out that getting your own commercial insurance will give you way more options and you can make more money, I don't want to hear anything you have to say because you are not a true business person. You got on the Turo platform early and you bought a lot of cars and you're making some money and you're good. That's cool. But I don't want to talk to you because we're going in two different directions. Um, essentially, I got a call from Geico. And this, this is one of the things. I'm going to do a whole video on it. Geico, I have not filed a claim with Geico, but Geico is nervous because I have so many cars. Geico is like, oh, I, I think I know what triggered that too because uh, I took the Porsche off of my Geico policy and I told the girl it was stolen. But I did not do a claim with Geico. Well, I couldn't. I only have liability insurance. So, but I feel that that somehow got in the system and they're like, well, what is this guy doing? Because essentially, the only reason that I have Geico insurance is for state law. To have a tag on my car, it must be insured minimum liability. That's the only reason I have it. If I didn't have to have it, I wouldn't have it. But I got to have it. And uh, they're getting nervous and they're not going to renew my policy in October. And I'm probably going to get the same um, message for my cars that that policy expires in December. So, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so that's going down. And, you know, I got a lot of people who are... Um, in the, in the videos talking about, you know, all these folks are telling their honest experience. I, I'm, once again, let me let me be blunt. There's someone who thinks that California, the home of the Crips and the Bloods, there isn't scamming going on. <laughs> home of Asian gangs. The Asian gangs are so ferocious, the government don't even mess with them. And they've got all type of scamming, credit card fraud, car theft going on. It is kind of laughable. People believe what they want to believe. But we're going to get into some business coaching. And once again, let me be really, really clear. I'm not going to do like 500 bucks a month and you get to talk to me like five or six times a month. That 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 isn't going to work. Uh, essentially, I pay, I'm in a coaching program where I pay a thousand bucks a month and I don't get to talk to the person who's running the coaching program is group coaching. I don't get to talk to him one on one whenever I want to talk to him. And I pay a thousand bucks a month. So understand that once again, the, the hand holding, um, we're, we're, we're going to get into some deep coaching. 
and it's going to be expensive. So if you don't have a business and if you're just like in that beginning stage, I, I would suggest you just sign up for the corporate papers that will be cheaper and there will be tiers to the corporate papers. There will be tiers. I'm going to work on that today. And I'm probably going to put together an intensive coaching program um, for like two to 2500 per month, something like that, where we'll actually get on the phone like maybe three or four times per month and for like a 30 minute session. So that's coming. And um, I will probably get that set up today and some other stuff. So we're going to get into some coaching. Also, everyone who is signed up for the Art of Holding, and we're going to talk about that, because I, I've been saying for weeks that don't sign up, don't buy it. Like, I got a few people who got the link, and now they're pestering me. It's like, hey, when do I get the sign? You're not. I'm just going to refund your money, and you're going to have to buy the new thing. All right, I've made that abundantly clear. And every time that I do uh, a switch up or an improvement or an upgrade, I get people who come out the woodwork. If you bought a car, of course, for me three years ago, I am not going to give you anything for free today. I might give you a discount, but I'm not going to give you anything for free. So just go ahead and sauce that. So with the corporate, you know, um, I am going to do a car rental course that's going to be in-depth. And I'm probably gonna start working on it um, <clears throat> maybe now. Because there, there, there's a lot of stuff that I actually know. And there's some things that I've, I've found out. Because um, I have people who are lazy, who watch the channel, who are consistently looking for that shortcut. They're consistently looking for that hack. and. I, in one of my courses, I say you need to do your product research. Now, I went ahead and explored YouTube videos. I went ahead and explored blogs. And I went ahead and explored forums. And I did not find any of the information that I've been talking to you guys here on YouTube. What does that tell you? That the people who are really doing this are not sharing their information or they're only sharing a part of the information. They're not sharing everything. Because essentially for me to be in this business 11 weeks, to have three cars stolen, to have the damage claims to, and I've only been doing this 11 weeks. Granted, I, I amped up really, really quickly. I have 24 cars, so more cars, more problems. I get that. But there ain't no way in hell you can tell me someone who's been doing this three or four years hasn't experienced the same thing. I met a lady that works for Hertz, and she told me someone brought back a car without a steering wheel driving it with some pliers. How do you... How, that, that, that was crazy and acted like nothing was wrong. So Hertz, National, Avis, Enterprise... This is why they have the contracts they do because they're going through the same thing. They just don't have someone on YouTube talking about what they're going through. And I know y'all love Samara's experience because she's pretty. And I know a lot of you weak, mentally weak, pussy whip men will give a chick a pass because she's pretty. R reminds me, uh, years ago, I used to work for this place called Horizon Pacific. And this girl comes in and she was tasty. She was very, very pretty, beautiful body, beautiful smile. Guy I was working with named Stan, he just gave her a piece of pottery. And I was like, you do that shit again. I'm, I'm, I'm telling on you because you did that in front of me and that makes me complicit with this. This dude just gave this chick a $400 vase because she was pretty. And essentially, a lot of you are giving Samara's experience a lot of passes because she's she got those big, beautiful brown eyes, that long hair, that soft voice, the manicured nails. And y'all are not looking at her the same way I'm looking at her because I don't see a pretty chick. I see, all right, someone in the car rental business, 
and I'm judging her based upon my experience. You cannot tell me she's telling everything. And for a while, she was putting out a lot of content, and this is something a lot of YouTubers do. They put out content to get views, not necessarily to help you or to educate you, because a lot of people, Graham Stephens has figured out, Graham Stephens has a fire video, and here's the thing. Most people in America don't make enough money to do fire. Like 75% of the population doesn't make enough money to do fire. 75%. The majority of America cannot do fire. It's not a mindset thing. You just simply, it's a math thing. It's a math and money thing. You got to have a certain amount of money. And, and to even do moderate fire, you need to be putting away $30,000 a year. Or it, it it comes out the rim of fire. There ain't no retire early. You get you might retire seven years earlier than you normally would. That's good. But the reality is, and Graham and a lot and me, Kevin, and all these guys, they put out this clickbait content. I saw a video the other day that was titled How to Live Off a Ten Thousand, How to Get Massive Dividends Off of a Ten Thousand Dollar Dividend Investment Portfolio. I watched the whole video. Nowhere did he even begin to tell me how I can get live off a ten thousand dollar dividend portfolio. Because the reality is, you can't. You can't. And this is one of the things, and this is one of the corrupt parts of the YouTube space that has created such false expectations and felonious narratives that you can start a business and start making all this money. You don't need any money. You don't need any experience. You don't have to use a lot of time. And you can just do this little hack. Now, I will say this about Graham. Um, being a YouTuber, as much content as he puts out, he's working more than 50 hours a week. He's got two or three channels. He's working more in a podcast. He's working more than 50 hours a week. I guarantee it. And that's why he isn't doing real estate because he's he, 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 he makes more money from YouTube than he does from real estate. So from a simple, yeah, I'm going to invest my energy and time here because I make more money. That just makes sense. But I guarantee you he's working more than 50 hours a week. Me, Kevin, I guarantee you he's working more than 50 hours a week. I guarantee it. And this is one of the things that people don't understand about YouTube. The really successful YouTubers are putting in hours, hours, I mean hours on content, designing thumbnails. So, you know, I'm not a fan of Graham Stephan, but I will say what I know and based upon being a YouTuber, dude is working. He is working. He has to be working to keep all the things he has going on. There's no way that he's just like doing this in three hours a week. They, there, there ain't no way. So he is working. I will give him that. Now, another thing that you guys have got to understand, we're going to get into some serious business building. And once I get a handle on this car rental business, I'm going to start another business. And you guys who are going to be in the corporate papers are going to get all of the down and dirty details, the real information. Like, let's take Erica. Erica is a smart woman. Erica actually talked to many people about trucking before she got into trucking. She got good kindness. And once she got into trucking, she realized, it ain't for me. I don't like this. Now, this is one of the beautiful things about being a business owner. If you don't like a business, you can just start another business. It's like, eh, I ain't gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna do something else. So, essentially, this is why you guys have got to get started. Because this is one of the biggest issues. Because there's a lot of fear. A lot of people are scared to get started. They are terrified about getting in the business and 
one of the things that is messing them up is this fear. Like I said, going back, I did a lot of research on the car rental business. I looked at a lot of stuff and I, I got frustrated. I got really, really frustrated because I felt I was wasting time. And these 11 weeks have been painful, but I've learned more in 11 weeks than I would have learned from all these fake ass YouTubers in two or three years. So from a time standpoint, this has been very, very beneficial because I've learned some stuff. Like one thing I've learned, renting cars on hire car without GPS kill switch, bad, 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 bad idea. Bad idea. I did not know what I was getting into because there was really no one that's going to like. I'm going to do the video videos because uh, I'm waiting for because uh, I'm going to become a hire car affiliate and I'm waiting on them to approve that. But I'm going to do videos, hire car tutorial videos, and that's going to be one of the first things. You're going to need a GPS, not just a not not just a navigate, not just a GPS. So if someone's got your car and you know where it is, okay? Maybe you can just go get your spare keys and go get your car. But you lose a set of keys and keys are very, very expensive, even for cheap cars. So why you need the GPS kill switch? Uh, my first one, I'm gonna do that story later today. Um, I was able to get my car back and it rented out the next day. So essentially, I did not lose a lot of money. I did not lose a lot of time. If you got a GPS and they're driving it, and also here's something else too. Why you want the GPS kill switch? You want to get your car back. You want to get that key back because as long as they have that key, they can come at some point and come back and pick up your car again because they got a key. You didn't think about that, did you? This, this GPS, the GPS kill switches will be on all of my new inventory because uh, right now I'm experiencing some uh, repair issues because I noticed uh, my 2000 because all my Camrys are I think I have a 2009 2009 anything I'm having problems with the 2008 and I'm just making it a mandate I'm not going to buy anything older than 2010 or 11 or 12 because I'm just having less issues. I'm having no issues. All my Acras that are 2010 to 2013, um, I've had no problems with them. No problems with my Acras, none, 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 none. And why are all these businesses closed? That's interesting. Like right now, all right, they're having church outside. Like right now, I'm going to um, get a car, the 2008, where the ball joint bearing broke on it on the renter. And I got on the look at it, and I'm probably going to get it towed tomorrow. But yeah, I, I'm having all kinds of issues. Like those folks, those folks of you who are talking about um, these cheap cars and you shouldn't spend no more than four thousand. A four thousand dollar car is not going to hold up for the rigors of renting cars. It's just not. You, you. That's going to be a big, big problem. It's going to be a huge, huge problem. But. So uh, I'm going to put the training programs together, work on that today, probably do another video, but there's going to be a lot of training that's coming up. And also stop waiting until the last, you know, because essentially what a lot of people are going to do is going to wait just before um, the month's over to make their purchase because I'm changing the price of the consults. Um, first of August 1st and I, I will get I will literally get 20 30 folks by August 30 you know it's crazy so I'm going to um, go ahead and put this together and we're going to be talking about a lot of different stuff and I'll put this video on both channels because we have a lot of stuff that we got to work on so that's all I got for you guys I will see you in the next one 
All the links will be below. So with that, talk to you guys later.